Hello there, I am Man in Yellow and welcome back to my small map strategy series. In this one we will be looking at, let me just pull it up, the Hilo 3.0 Queen strategy as I've chosen to call it. Queen is something that we call a lot of large phobies in this game. Any large phobie that is going to be your primary win condition on small maps and also to some degree on large maps is what we call a queen phobie. The term is kind of stolen from chess, I guess, where the queen is a very powerful piece that you play around. This is the same idea. So you use Hero 3.0, which is an incredibly strong, very large phobie. I can just show it in my collection in case anyone hasn't seen it before. This is Hevo 3.0. Actually, let's just do the level 1 version. This is Hevo 3.0. It is a very large phobie for 9 keys, the highest cost you can get. Has a lot of health, has movement and range, 2 movement, 2 range. And it has 350 attack damage on an AoE attack that deals 100% AoE to all enemies hit like around the target and the target and then you also light them all on fire which is pretty powerful so this strategy is essentially using that as your core phobie and you use it alongside the shovel which is a great great support phobie this phobie allows you to push other phobies around and therefore it works incredibly well with hevo 3.0 because you can push it forward and sometimes get two hits or just a free hit and that is very, very scary to play against because two hits from a Hevo 3.0 is like 700 and damage just from the attack power and then 100 from fire after that at level 1. So that's 800 damage instantly, which can one hit something like a Inoculus or Repeller or any like smaller phobies pretty much just get one hit by it. And the fire can also take out dimensionals and stuff. It gets even scarier, however, if you use it with buffers, which is something that works very well with Hebo 3.0. If you use it with any of these buffers, you can increase the attack, then move the Hebo 3.0 forward and do an even larger AoE attack. At that point, you are getting to somewhere where you can kind of just delete the entire enemy team if you get two free hits, which is also why we have Phantom here as an alternative to the Hebo 3.0. The idea with this strategy is, like I said, just to use Hevo 3.0 as your queen piece. And then beside it, you usually use some form of support phobies, maybe a couple other attackers, usually turrets. You can also see we have both the the unicorn and either stabby or boom angles down here, which you can use with it if you so desire. After summoning Hevo 3.0 and the shovel, which you are probably going to be using with it, you have 12 keys left because you get 24 keys on small maps. So you have to be very like picky with which other phobies you bring because you can't really be bringing too many one keys, for example. Then the rest of your team will just end up lacking a lot of power in this lineup you kind of have to bring the hero 3.0 out 3.0 out and then fight the opponent you can't do like trading point panic points or something like that that's just not gonna work so you're not gonna use this on a map where you cannot fight the opponent but you can do that on pretty much every map with a hero 3.0 because you can lob over on people and do a lot of stuff like that as for like phobies that it's frequently paired with i just have some of them down here there are also a lot of other ones that can work fairly well with the hero 3.0 but we of course have like the buffers and the phantom up here which you you could choose to go for if you want that the phantom is more of like a super combo piece instead of the shovel but that that could be done if you wanted to and then we have down here we have a tractor a tractor is kind of on the very high cost side because at that point you only have six keys for other phobies so then your other phobies don't really have that many options you're probably not even going to be able to afford more than one a single one key for that game then if you go for that but it can be pretty powerful with the hero 3.0 because you can like use it to move a bunch of phobies together and then deal a ton of damage and it also just gives you a very large damage zone works with the shovel stuff like that so it is an option but it is very expensive so it's not something you see all that commonly used with it then we have the grave digger which is actually a phobie that you see a lot with the hero 3.0 Grave Digger is just a fantastic phobie with it because you can put down blocks somewhere on the map and then you can use the Hevo 3.0 to attack those blocks and splash on the enemy that way. So you would like place a block here if the enemy is standing here 
and then with your hero 3.0 you will stand here and lob over at the block dealing damage to the enemy. That way you can stay at a fairly far distance and still get to do a lot of damage to the opponent's phobies. It also allows you to splash on multiple other enemies sometimes and it can also just be very good if you are doing the whole I'm gonna buff my hero and deal a ton of damage to the entire team thing. Then you could use it for that. Outside of that there are also just a lot of maps where removing obstacles on can be very good for you. So Gravedigger is a fantastic phobie to pair with Hero 3.0. Hero is kind of the phobie that you paired it with before we had like Le Shovel and Phantom and all of these kind of very very powerful tools to use with it. Then we have the Unicorn and the other turrets like I talked about. You just use those because they're good on small maps. You can take control of the map and that kind of makes a lot of sense to do on small maps. Then you are spending your remaining 12 keys on something that gives you a lot of power for not that high of a cost. So they make a lot, a lot of sense to use. Then finally I also have the Clinico in here, which you can use for later stages in the game to keep your Hero 3.0 very healthy and alive because you can just heal it over and over again so you can like hit an enemy and then run away and heal your 3.0 wait a little bit go in again go back heal your 3.0 and you can kind of win the late game that way in some games depending on what the opponent is doing of course so that's like the very basics of how you use this phobie i would say a thing that is pretty important to do is you want to summon the hero 3.0 fairly early which is of course pretty hard because then you're giving the opponent a lot of turns to do stuff on the map where you aren't doing anything but it's kind of important to do because otherwise the opponent will bring, bring a counter phobie to you and that can be pretty tough to deal with now that's not not necessarily like the end of the world but it can be pretty bad for you now i'm going to show a couple games with this just my own games because that's the easiest thing to do instead of me having to search for other games because it's not that common to see hero 3.0 everywhere it is pretty good so you see it a fair bit but it's not everywhere on small maps people use it a lot on large maps but not that much on small maps so to a certain degree on small maps i have a win and a loss i'll just take the loss first so we can look at that because i actually made that mistake here where i summoned it as my last phobie and because of that they have the ability to bring a large counter phobie to my hero 3.0 and i don't have any ability to like kind of fight back if you want to put it that way like if i had summoned it very early in this game then when they summoned their blastomatic which spoiler alert is what they used to counter it here i could have gone for something that would allow me to really bully the blastomatic or help me in the fight against it because there could probably have been some phobies i could have used against it that would have helped me a lot there for example i could maybe have brought like a freeze phobie forward or something like that i could maybe have locked it down with the rusty and tried to hard rush them there's a lot of different things i could have tried to do could also just have brought my uh, like a radigan even though that's very expensive to fight the blastomatic that's probably too expensive to do but still there, there's like a lot of options you could do if you knew it was coming or if you just have spare keys left over so what we see here so far is fairly common like fighting you will see on a lot on the higher ranks i'm bringing the boom in here so they can't go in and hit me because they are just going to get blown up if they do that and that's pretty much it i should also totally have swapped these two phobies around the shovel and the razor mouth that would have made a lot of sense to do because then I would be able to take the top point right now. And here I bring the Gonzo Bonzo fairly early on. This makes it even harder for the opponent to walk into me. And now I have a lot of power because I can either use it with the bomb or I can use it with the just the unicorn to do a bunch of damage, stuff like that. You can actually see I use it here just to kill the jar cannon because I want it to be kind of aggressive. But at this point, I should be saving up for the Hero 3.0, which I'm not going to do. I believe I summon a Inoculus here. Maybe it's next turn. And that is kind of a bad idea. Or maybe I just bank. But I certainly summon something else before the Hero 3.0. Or maybe I do it after, but I end up not being able to counter their large phobie, which is very bad for me, is the point. Now that said... If we were even levels, like if everything was the same level, I would actually have been able to beat the Blastomatic in this game. So you can still do it even if you get countered, but it's just a lot harder 
for you. Okay, I summoned the Inoculus here, which is just a terrible idea. I should just have banged a turn more and backed off to let them and just let them take my points or something. If I wanted to bring the hero 3.0. Realistically, I should probably even have swapped my strategy to something else at this point, but I didn't do that for some reason. And now I bring the hero 3.0 in just a couple turns, I can just move forward a little bit here. Because this is just waiting and looking at each other. They move a little bit up towards my heart to threaten me. I move up here to kill their uh, Razor Mouth and bring my hero 3.0 out. Also looking back, I shouldn't even have killed their Razor Mouth there. Because that allows them to bring another phobie. That was also a mistake here. But like I said, I could still have won this if I either brought the Hevo 3.0 earlier so I could bring a counter to this large Blastomatic, or if we were just even levels, it would actually still have been a win, because I would have been able to kill the Blastomatic here in a couple turns when it moves in. You could also see that the opponent was forced to move back, because otherwise I could push my Hevo 3.0 into them, and essentially just obliterate their team. But on this turn, I could actually have killed the Hevo 3.0 if we were, or not the Hevo 3.0, the Blastomatic, if we were even levels. That's how much attack power that actually is here. Because I would have been able to hit it with a buffed up Hevo 3.0 twice, or like anything like that. I guess that's the only phobia I can actually hit twice with and buff. So it would be Hevo 3.0 buffed twice, one hit from the Razor Mouth, one hit from the Shovel, two hits from the Inoculus, and that would have dealt like. 2950 damage at level 1 I believe, it's something along those lines, which would have killed the Blastomatic because it has 2900 health, so that would have been enough. But here it's not enough, so I end up just going for the uh, Stabby here at the top, I think I was like 30 damage off if I remember correctly, or maybe it was 40, something along those lines. But I end up just killing the Stabby, which will end up with me losing the game here because I just can't fight back at this. I have three Mechanical Phobies and they have a, what's it called, a very large Mechanical Counter. And they also just blasted my Gonzo Bonzo out of the way. So that is very much just game over at this point. I can't really fight back at against them. At, like in the current boss state, it's just impossible to win. Yeah, I just go in so, th so that the game will end and let them kill me and the game ends like I said but yeah you could kind of see the mistake there but you could also see how much like power it could have brought if I played it a little bit better now we will look at another game where I actually use the Hebo 3.0 correctly I guess you could say in this one I also end up fighting them fairly early on at least if I this is the game that I remember I think this is the game I remember I just do the very common opener here which is you go Brave Digger into Inoculus, into, or not into Inoculus, Brave Digger into Unicorn and then Inoculus. That is very, very common on this map because then you, you get to break these two walls, which are very annoying, and you get a Trapper out early or a Turret Trapper, whatever you want to call the Unicorn, and you get Inoculus, which can control all of this space very, very well early on. So that is a very, very common opener on this map. I would say at high ranks, this kind of opener with these three phobies happens like almost every single time you get on this map from player one. It's like sometimes people do some variation because they just want to play something different, but it's pretty optimal for this kind of game plan. Now I just bring the shovel because then I can kind of fight back against them and they will probably also bring the shovel to bully me if I didn't bring it. So it just makes sense to do so that we are fairly even. And then I will begin saving up for the Hero 3.0 if I remember correctly. And that will leave me with three keys if they choose to try and counter me. Thank you. 
which could be used for a bunch of different things depending on which phobia they go for, of course. But just having leftover keys gives you a lot of extra options. Also here I am allowed to just kill their one key for free because they probably didn't notice that their inoculus was one level lower than mine so they can't kill it here. Even if they hit it twice right now it would not die because my inoculus is over leveled by one level. So that's just pretty unlucky for them, I guess. Also, they are in a pretty bad spot for me summoning the Hero 3.0 here because they don't have any left like spot, spots left on the map or whatever you want to call it the unit slots are filled so they can't summon anything more than this which makes it very hard for them to do anything at this point they have to back off very very far also maybe i should have put the hero 3.0 up here and then the grave digger one tile further up so i wouldn't take damage on it i'm not sure if that really is a thing that would matter but maybe it could have here you can see i used the grave digger like I was talking about for poking them and their heart because you can do the AOE splash off of the block. This also makes it very dangerous for them to walk forward and try and fight me because they will get splashed on a bunch and my hero 3.0 will probably be fairly safe while doing it. I can also, because I have three keys here, I can bring a clinical if I need to. I could bring some kind of counter phobia if they go for whichever phobia it could be. Like if they went for erratic, I could maybe bring creep or something to poison it. Or I could maybe bring rusty and try to lock it and then splash onto it for free from a distance using the block or something. Or just hit it with inoculus from a distance without being in danger. Things like that. Or I, if they brought something like Blastomatic, I could either bring like a Thunder Rocks to just have a lot of anti-mechanical damage or whatever you want to call it or I could bring so many other things like there's a lot more options once you have some keys here they just bring a sparky so I'm just going to bring my clinical and heal this inoculus because it was pretty damaged at this point and I don't really feel that the sparky is dangerous enough for me it's only really dangerous for the inoculus right now And they bring a similar thing, but at this point this is going to be very hard for them. They also bring the blue out just to try and deny me from doing AoEs on their team. So that I can't move forward right now and splash on the heart. Because if they didn't have that, I could in theory just walk up here, do a large attack here, hitting all of these phobies. And then they would be pretty sad, most likely. Instead I'm just going to move back a little bit. But they are in a very bad spot now because they can't ever really take this point without losing a phobie and if they lose any of their phobies then the game is over whether that be the sparky clinical shovel or inoculus they will just lose because the, if those phobies die they, they are out of the game so they kind of can't win from here already because the blue can never take the point anyway also i believe the blue actually dies to a trap here which is kind of hilarious to me the one time I see the blue in a spot where it could actually be useful it just steps on a trap but like even if this had gone off I would have been able to kill their sparky so it doesn't really matter that it died to the trap they would still lose the game so even if it, if the blue hadn't gotten trapped here and my hero 3.0 was debuffed they would still have lost the Sparky because it has only 2000 or something health. I could hit twice with this and then I could push the Unicorn in and it would still die. So the game would be over either way. But kind of funny to me that Blue just died like that. And you can see Hero 3.0 is just a very, very hard phobie to deal with because if you ever go close to it with your team, they will just deal so much damage to you. And I didn't really have an example here where it just obliterated an entire enemy team. But that's also kind of realistic because most of the time you don't really get to do that. 
they instead just spread their phobies out and have a very hard time playing against you. That is the more common thing that you see because you just can't really deal with it. If you let it AoE you, you are going to die because then it's suddenly doing very, very large amounts of damage in a turn. Those kind of combos only really happen if you use Phantom with it. And even with that, most people spread out in a way where you can get at most like two or three hits with it in, at once. So they don't have them very often. They are rather rare. This is like what you often see. You use blocks and you use the shovel to kind of force the opponent back. And they end up just backing into a corner with their entire team out of fear of being AOE'd. And then they eventually lose because of that. Because they can't have anything on the board due to the Hero 3.0 just being a phobia you can't really deal with. Anyway, that was the two games I had for this one. I don't really want to do more than that because then the video would be very long and these are supposed to not be all that long. Like I'm aiming for somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes for most of them. That would be the best. So I will see you guys in the next one. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Bye.